So what I want for audience participation in between in between the speakers is, and now for something completely different, like we can, and I'll sort of like conduct you. So uh, because each of these stories and things is completely different than the others, and, and that was kind of the thing is, let's have some different takes on this. So uh, we can try it for the first time. Ready? One, two, three. And now for something completely different. Yeah, there we go. Okay, Corey, come on up. Corey is an illustrator with Pulp Studios, and he has a... Uh, the first, um, first little chat. Each of them are about five minutes. If you wanna, do you want me to just advance it to the slide for you? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. Go ahead. Right now? Fire away. Yeah, right now? go for it. Thank you, Brandon. Thanks everybody for coming this morning. I'm really excited to uh, kind of share my story of crossover. Uh, so as I was thinking about it, I think I ended up having a crossover story that essentially has three layers to it. So the first layer of crossover for me is a story of taking the leap. So in 2005. Uh, I was working full time at a at a uh, Elk Island Public School Board in their communications department doing graphic design, and I took the leap. My wife was pregnant at the time, and started my own little business doing graphic design out of my basement, which was scary and frightening. And then in 2010, uh, I started a pro uh, project or a new endeavor with my now business partner, the venerable Kelly Mellings, who is here today, and uh, w we started Pulp Studios Inc. at that time. Now, crossing over from a sole proprietorship to running a business as a, with a partner uh, as an incorporated entity has you know, provided me all kinds of challenges and opportunities to grow. Um, it's provided lots of uh, opportunities to do more meaningful creative work than I could have achieved on my own. And uh, I'll be talking a little bit about that, which brings me to the next crossover, which is building a relationship. So this crossover kind of I'll start at the most recent. So in September of this year, on the 15th, uh, we were honored to receive uh, an award from Native Counseling Services of Alberta, who we've done lots of work with, which these slides here are all uh, from work that we've done with NCSA over the years. Um, so the work that we've done with them uh, is really meaningful and uh, makes a difference in, in the community. Um, the award that we received was uh, for outstanding uh, work in, um, in the Aboriginal community. Um, it was a great honor. Uh, the project that I'll be talking about in particular is this uh, Home Fire, is the most recent project that we did. Um, it's a film which you'll get a chance to view, <laughs> share with people, whatever. Um, it's essentially uh, um, a piece that talks very pointedly about the effects of colonialism on the Aboriginal community. Um, the project from our end, it was a very uh, awesome collaborative process. Kelly did the art direction, I handled the illustration work, we handed it off to K Kim Clegg at Rat Creek, he mastered the animation work which then went to NCSA, they compiled that into the film itself, uh, which is um, essentially a documentary film that integrates animation uh, in it. Um, the piece uh, is very impactful, uh, carries a lot of meaning, um, and communicates very well uh, to a broader audience about, about the issues uh, that Aboriginal communities face. Um, the relationship component of it is, is very interesting to me. So NCSA, uh, Kelly had been working with them for, I don't know, a couple years before we started uh, working together as Pulp Studios. So we've been working with them for, as Pulp Studios for over well, around five years now. And uh, we've transitioned from a relationship which looks like you know client service provider to a relationship that's more like a collaborative relationship, a collaborative effort between us and them uh, and whoever else they bring into a project. And we're all working you know, with a really deep passion to create these pieces that, that are more than they could be without you know, everybody's effort. Um, that relationship didn't happen overnight. It's something that we've kind of worked out over the years and it happened sort of through just you know, deep engagement and us really pouring into the projects that we've been doing with them. 
you know, on our own time and outside of, of work hours or just <laughs> investing way too much time in the work. Um, maybe not the best from a business uh, perspective in terms of dollars and cents, but that brings me to my next crossover, which is making a difference. So I'd like to just read an excerpt from uh, an email that uh, NCSA received recently uh, from someone who had the opportunity to view the, the film. I'm the president of the Rotary Club in Jasper, Alberta. I attended the recent district conference in Edmonton and saw the Home Fire documentary, which was an incredibly moving and instructive eye-opener for most of the 250 people in the room. It fundamentally changed something in me at a basic level so that I can never look at the native question the same way. So this person's experience viewing this film uh, really mirrors my own experience and how working with NCSA and having the opportunity to work on these projects has transformed uh, my own understanding of, of the issue of colonialism, the issues that Aboriginal culture face in, in Alberta and in Canada, um, and how it's really a community responsibility to help these things change and it's going to take time and effort on all fronts. Um, I know this is really brief, but I think what I wanted to leave you guys with is that it's my hope, uh, you know, just with this little short sharing that you'll all think about in your own lives, in your own careers, where are your opportunities to cross over. Uh, if there's something that you're scared of, that's probably the direction you should push. Um, because a lot of times with that struggle and that fear comes the opportunity to create things that make a difference. And you never know, you might actually create something that changes somebody's perceptions on a fundamental level. So thanks very much. Um, yeah, so um, I'm Sandra Murillo Paz, or Sandra Murillo Paz, which is how you pronounce my name. Um, I wanted to, it's not that I'm picking on you, really, but. I wanted to share with you my uh, crossover story because uh, as a means of a shortcut or maybe as a hint of a shortcut of, or a suggestion of a shortcut because I, I think it's a good way to save some time when I wish that somebody was there to tell me when, like back then, um, this is how it's going to get and you'll be fine at the end. So and there was nobody really. So I just wanted to, yeah, share with you the story. Um, yeah, you can start. Um, so yeah, in term, just, just to see if it works for you, people who are trying different things, it's always like a, a good thing to know how to skip some um, struggles and save some time. And as you can probably tell by now, I'm not originally from here. I've lived in Edmonton for four years, but I'm originally from Mexico City, which is, yeah, like 20 million people crowded in an area that's about, well, no, 9 million people in an area about the size of Edmonton. Um, and I found myself comparing things a lot when I just moved here. Like my old home versus my new home, the old city versus the new city. And the silliest things like um, Mexican food versus, I don't know, poutine or beef, whatever it is here. Um, they're really crowded, but it's still consistently fast transportation system back home versus um, the really long freezing waits on a deserted bus stop on a Sunday evening here at minus 30. And then just bitching about it and seeing how things are better there and now it's pretty here. Um, and then, yeah, I realized that's not that helpful <laughs> at some point. I wasted a lot of time though. Like I, I thought it was a lot of, I could have just seen it in a different way and skipping through those struggles to get to, to the way I see things now. But I realized that start, I started um, combining things instead of comparing things. And then just meshing things together and trying to get to a new place or seeing things in a different way to, to create something new. That worked really well for my mood. And then also for, for the work I do as a designer, which just started giving me so many different ideas uh, and different starting points. So yeah, and I, I realized that if you don't see how much time you're wasting, you like you will never really get to a point where you're happy. And I, in the end, like it's th really different one city from another, but it's beautifully weird, this, this Edmonton as a city. And the communities that you can find here, like the creative communities are, are really nice and very talented and welcoming. So, and I'm really actually very excited to, 
be part of this community. Like it's exciting to be part of Edmonton right now. So it's just like feeling like it's booming. So, so yeah, that's really it. It's really short, but that's how it goes. <laughs> Something to fuck off, I'm sure. Hi, uh, I'm Chris McBain, and uh, I grew up in Northern Ontario, Timmins to be exact. Uh, very cold. I'm the son of a, a trucker and a union man. And uh, my dad says uh, only two kinds of people come from Timmins, whores and hockey players. <laughs> and I don't skate. <laughs> so. <laughs> ha! So, so, um, so yeah, my crossover story, there's lots of little crossover, crossover things. Uh, I grew up queer in uh, Northern Ontario, which is really like growing up creative in a family of accountants. Um, <laughs> in a lot of ways. And when I moved out here um, uh, with Teen Jesus Barbie and Igby Izzard, who are some drag queens in the city, or were here, I, uh, we got really drunk one night and they put me in drag for the first time and was like, oh my God, <laughs> I'm a girl. Um, <laughs> and I should clarify, you know, to quote uh, Nugzima Jackson, she says, a transvestite is a man who puts on a dress and gets sexual kicks. Someone who's transgendered has an operation and becomes the opposite gender, and a drag queen has too much fashion sense for one gender. So, so I, I do it for entertainment. We did it for entertainment purposes, and I got um, really caught up with a group called the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. They were a group of men who wore dresses and nuns' habits, and their vows were to promulgate joy and expiate stigmatic guilt and, and all that stuff. So I started a chapter here in Edmonton, so there were, I, had, I, I had a group of us <laughs> freaks doing this work, which was really, really great. And it, it was the, the immense power that comes out of this medium, there are no words for. You capture someone's attention and imagination and can get away with murder <laughs> and say whatever you feel or think. So it's a really, really powerful medium. And I caught on to that right away because it was... Um, uh, I have a lot of passion for social justice and things like that. So it was a really great medium. And we were doing, without even speaking, we were activists. We were, we were challenging um, religious idioms by, um, you know, being men in nuns' habits. And, uh, and we were gay. And we were, um, what else was it that we did? I had this great line in my head. We, uh, <laughs> we did, um, we were, well, we were men in justice. So we were challenging gender as well. Uh, and sexuality. So if you want to slip to the next slide here. So this is us. This is the chapters disbanded. Our egos got too big for our um, for our habits. We started as a nonprofit, which was great. It was a great experience starting a nonprofit. This is Sister Sissy Fister and Sister Angel Kiss and Sister Roxy to Cradle. These are good memories. But anyway, so after we disbanded, I kind of lost my medium for that sort of thing. And this is sort of an internal crossover. There's lots of crossovers. You can get it. I don't have to draw it out for you. So I moved on. Um, and now, <laughs> ta-da! <laughs> Do you see? Do you see it? Do you see? <laughs> yeah? Yeah. OK, good. Yeah. Some people are like, oh my god, I didn't even know it was you. Felicia Rimbottom is uh, my drag persona, a sassy Jewess. Uh, and so I, I started, uh, I, I, so I married the two things, drag and, and social justice, and I started a company, sissyentertainment.com, or sissy, sissy Entertainment, it's not a web thing that could go creepy places. And so essentially what I do is I do fundraising for uh, local nonprofits, so I, I get to marry my art, and like, I don't know, for those of you who are really creative, and then all of a sudden do that crossover from creativity into business, I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> I just want to do the creative piece. But so yeah, so I do entertainment and fundraisers for uh, nonprofits. I have one on November 7th, um, and we're kind of taking a bite out of homelessness. That's the theme this year at Latitude 53. If you want to come, that's my plug. Yeah, good? Smooth? <laughs> so yeah, so that's, uh, that's my crossover. I'm the son of a trucker, and I put on a wig, and uh, had a lot to drink that night that this happened. And uh, yeah, so this is, this is my crossover story. Ta-da! <laughs>